Welcome back to Autism at Home, brought to you by us at Early Autism Project Malaysia through our non-profit initiative, The Hope Project. My name is Josheben Isaacs, and it's so nice to see you again. Welcome to the third part on the topic of imitation. In part one of this series, we talked about the importance of imitation and why it can be challenging for individuals with autism to develop as well as the developmental milestones of imitation. In part two, we talked about naturalized imitation and also how to teach it. However, some children with autism find it hard to imitate in natural settings. Because of that, the remaining lessons in this series will look at how we teach each type of imitation in a structured setting at the table. So in today's lesson, we will be talking about object cued imitation. Let's watch some examples of object cued imitation. Tinsel, tinsel, little star, how I wonder what you are. My turn. Okay, your turn. Ah, fun, good job. Think about your child entering the first day of kindergarten. They may be following their new friends around and doing what they do. For example, when their friends begin playing with the sand play box, your child might copy their actions. Or maybe when we take gardening classes, we would surely watch how other people hold and use a trowel, hand pruners, and the list goes on. We will watch how they bend their knees when lifting the shovel, dig the ground, and stand straight again to transfer them elsewhere. Even in our daily lives, there are so many object-based imitation skills we learn by copying how other people use them. If we recall the developmental milestones of imitation, object-cued imitation comes after naturalized imitation. And as imitation further develops, we will notice that a lot of the actions we do actually involve the use of objects. When children play, they may use musical instruments or dolls. When they attend physical education class in school or gym, they learn how to balance a ball or how to use a baseball bat. What about in science class? They observe how the teacher uses the equipment in a science experiment. Object cued imitation is so important and crucial that its development has been linked to the development of their play skills. Let's look at how we can teach object cued imitation at the table. Before any child can learn this skill, it is important that their engagement and motivation are developed. And if we recall the building blocks of learning, other skills such as cooperation at the table and off the table, some attention, as well as some imitation are also important. There is a huge number of object cued imitation that a child can learn. Some of the examples of the very basic actions we could teach, such as shaking maracas, waving flags, scribbling on paper, pushing a toy car, pressing buttons on toys, and the list goes on. In this lesson, we will use shaking maracas as an example. Keep in mind that the same teaching method applies for all other actions. First, show a video model or a person imitating another person doing the object cued action. Do ensure that you and your child each have a maracas. Then say, do this while shaking your maracas. We recommend demonstrating this action at your child's eye level. When your child is able to do this, praise them or give them a quick interactive reinforcement like high fives or tickles, and then repeat the step two or three more times to get enough practice. And of course, don't forget to always reward your child for a job well done. Let's watch how this is done after the video model is shown to the child. All right, do this. Well done, here you go. Well, that's how to teach object cued imitation at the table. The same teaching method will apply to teaching them a skill in natural settings. Similar to teaching at the table, for any skill that you want to teach off the table, you could always start by showing a video model. 
In this example, we will use the throwing ball into a box action. This would be an appropriate action that can be taught in a playtime setting. To make practice more in context and functional, have a box placed against a wall or a door can prevent the ball from falling behind the box. Hula hoops on the floor would also be a great visual tool to mark you and your child's position from the box. As you're standing inside your hula hoop, say, do this and throw the ball into the box. Again, demonstrating this action at your child's eye level is beneficial instead of having them look up at you and try to imitate your action. When your child is able to do this, praise them or give them a quick interactive reinforcement like tickles or spaghetti arms and repeat the step two to three more times to get enough practice. At the end, always reward your child for a job well done. Let's watch this practice. Do this. There are so many fun actions and activities that you and your child can engage in together while learning the skill of imitation. The more successful they feel, the better they will engage and attend to future learning sessions. Engagement, motivation, cooperation, attention are all important keys in learning any skill. The key word here is success. It is crucial to break the skill down to parts that would help increase your child's overall success. If your child starts demonstrating looking away from you, angrily throwing things, screaming, walking away, or just staring into space and not responding to you, these are all signs that your child may not be motivated. And this could be because they are feeling rather unsuccessful. A strategy that will increase your child's success is to check their performance at the table first, where learning is more structured and less distraction around. When your child is successful at the table, learning can then be attempted off the table. If your child appears distracted by the environment, consider letting her sit still on a chair while you demonstrate the action. You can also consider doing the trials at a less distracted area or corner of the room before gradually moving to the bigger space. Additionally, when your child has shown consistent success in one action after another, then you may be able to introduce a new skill to teach. As a general guideline, perhaps when you have observed nine successes out of 10 trials, then you may want to introduce the next skill. Examples of other object cute imitations we commonly teach our children at EAP include shake maracas, bang hammer, stack rings, putting hat on, threading beads, and the list goes on. It is also important to practice learned skills in different settings, which typically includes a different location, working with different people, and possibly with different materials if needed. This is to ensure that your child is able to generalize the skills and maintain them. Pop quiz. Which of these is an example of object-based imitation? Blowing a flying kiss, pinching two fingers together, pressing piano keys, or none of the above? C, that's right. Object cute imitation refers to copying an action with an object, or in this case, a piano. Maria attempts to teach some object cute action by shaking an object with her daughter, Maisara. When Maria demonstrates shaking the rattle action, Maisara kept wanting to put the rattle into her mouth and didn't seem like she was attending to her mother. What can be done to increase Maisara's success? Keep trying and increase the trials, use a strong reward, use a different item to shake, or all of the above. Yes. If the goal is to teach Maisara to imitate shaking an item, then Maria could try using a different item like maracas instead. Now it's your turn. Identify two object-based actions that your child has yet to learn. Try to teach these actions to your child by breaking the skills down, providing reinforcement, and doing sufficient practice. Thank you so much for watching our lesson on object-cued imitation. In the next lesson, we will be talking about 
gross motor imitation. If you haven't already, do check out our free online resource platform, Autism at Home, which has all the corresponding articles and downloadables for you. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Instagram, Facebook to stay updated. Thank you so much and we will see you soon.